So he was the same. Everybody, I was the first in the Marvel universe. Hmm. So how how does it feel to have made such an achievement? Like, how do you reflect on it? Yar, honestly, I haven't done anything to, you know. I mean, I haven't gone and met anyone. I haven't kissed anyone's ass. I haven't bribed anyone. <laughs> it's not nepotism. You know, it's yeah. nothing of that sort. It's just that I mean, you know, something aligned. Like everyone was telling me, this yeah. things aligned. You know, you've done your time, and the universe believes that you're ready for it now. So uh, it just happened. So uh, I, sorry. Now the stars were on your side. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it feels great. Um, the process of uh, the, I mean, what was it like? It was. See, it's acting. The craft is the same. <laughs> It's just the setting is different. The scale is completely different. Uh, also, it was in English, which is my first language, my first language of comfort. So I'm okay with that, you know. Yeah, because they, I don't know if everyone knows this, but we've just come out from in the US from a massive uh, strike that the Writers Association yes. had, as well as then the Actors uh, Union. We joined them, and that went on for I think about five or six months. So I've always believed this since. Since I've been a kid, probably watching Hindi films, you know, and English films, I've always said that you know, an actor, okay, great, we've grown up watching Amitabh Bachchan, Shah Rukh Khan, whatever, they're great, you know. But the thing is that yeah. they translate the vision of the actor and director, so the yes. uh, of the writer and the director, because the it's finally the embryo, the seed is from the writer. The writer is so, the most important person. There is nobody bigger yeah. than the writer in terms of a film. You know, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so yeah, so I believe there's a huge opportunity for growth, for learning, which again I got. And like I said, that you know, when you don't have work, suddenly this comes up and you know it it, it tides your not acting phase in front of a camera by giving you the financial security when you're just doing voicing for another person another character hi i'm mohan kapoor and you're watching the podcast with enigmatic horizon hello everyone my name is murchana and today we have a very special guest amongst us well he's a veteran actor of hindi cinema mr mohan kapoor mr kapoor is not only a prominent actor in indian cinema but he has also made a name for himself in hollywood that too in marvel cinematic universe well he plays the character yusuf khan in the movie the marvel as well as the series miss marvel he plays the father to miss marvel aka kamla khan in bollywood he has also appeared in several popular movies such as haunted treaty jolly llb the most recent one being the vaxen war as well as web series such as hostages and black widows so Thank you for being with us today. It is an honor to have you. Thank you, Murjana. Thank you so much for having me. And a big, big hello to all those who are going to be watching and listening to this absolute fun podcast of ours on Enigmatic Production. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, sir. And uh, first of all, we would like to congratulate you on being part of the MCU, one of the biggest film franchise in the history of cinema worldwide. So. we would like to know um uh, how it all happened uh, tell us about your experience on working with uh, marvel so um i have an uh, a manager in la uh, who became my manager because i had done some production uh, an independent film here in india and um she really liked my work and she said that why, why don't you come to hollywood and work in hollywood i said what are you crazy i said i can barely make ends meet over here <laughs> with hollywood i'm not going to work it's not going to happen So then the director also tried to convince me over the next couple of days. He said, "No, no, listen, you should think about it." So I asked him, "Okay, what do I have to do?" So she's saying, "I'm also a manager, so I will uh, represent you." So I said, "What do I have to do?" So she's saying, "Just we just sign a uh, memorandum of understanding that I'm representing you, and then I'll take it on from there." I said, "Okay." So she kept sending me scripts for auditions and things like that. And you know, lo and behold, I used to actually do the auditions and I used to get the role. but because i didn't have a visa and the reason i didn't have a visa is because uh, i hadn't i didn't have anything i didn't have a portfolio i didn't have a show reel which is another 
saga by itself as to why I never had it because, you know, God loves me and I just kind of got opportunities in my life very early on. And I never had to go looking for work or asking for work. Things just happened for me. So I don't know why. Maybe I'm just not wired that way. I just, I didn't keep anything. I've never kept anything. I still haven't kept anything. So she didn't have anything because you need to collect a lot of stuff. You know, your showreel, photographs, all about your work and this, that and the other. And then apply for a work visa for the US. So I never did that. So all the auditions that she gave me through the years, which is now about five, six years, I did and I got the roles, but I never had to have a visa. So in August 2020, when the lockdown in India, had, I think the first time it had just uh, lifted, she sent me a script. She said, hey, I want you to self-tape for this. So I said, oh, God, another script from Hollywood. I said, hey, I'm not going to get it. And, you know, we don't have a visa. She said, just do it. Yeah. So I said, okay. So that scene was of me playing a father to a young girl. And uh, it's a discussion between us. So I needed a female voice to help me do that uh, audition. So I requested a friend of mine to come over. Um, and I said, I need a girl's voice. So can you please come over? So she came over very kindly, set up a camera. We rehearsed a lot, the scene. And um, I told her, you know, I want you to pause on this point. I want you to say this fast. I want you to say this angry. I want you to say this in a fun way, teasing, etc., etc." et, cetera, et cetera. And we created a scenario, I created a scenario that I'm having dinner and this discussion with this young girl who's playing my daughter is ha happening over a dinner table. And we said, okay, now let's record. So we recorded it. And at the end of the scene, as per the script, we uh, cut and then we reviewed the shot. And I said, oh, I really like what I've done. She said, yeah, even I really like what you've done. So she said, shall we do one more? Yeah. I said, why? She said, for safety. I said, safety of what? I said, I like what I've done. I said, I've hit the right notes as a performer. I always, you know, even when I'm shooting for whatever film or project, not just for auditions. If I've hit the right note as a performer, I've got the right points of my performer. I don't want to do more takes. Why should I do more? I've got it. Because otherwise, it never ends. You know, you can keep doing different versions of it. It doesn't end. I feel I've got it. I've got it. So I said, okay, we've done once. You got it. Send it. She said, you're risking it. I said, you're not going to get it anyway. No point. I'm just doing it as a formality. Send it. He sent it. Two days later, my manager calls up and she's saying, I sent it to the casting agent, Sarah Haley Finn of Marvel. And she loved it. She's saying that as far as she's concerned, she's found the character of this father. So I said, oh, that's sweet. She's saying, but yeah, but she still has to send it to Disney, to Marvel, and they have to do it. And there's a whole process. And they might, you know, make your audition again with another scene and this, that. I said, oh, okay. An audition, something like this, you know, like a, over a Zoom call. I said, yeah, okay. About four or five days later, and because she's in LA, I'm in India, all these calls with her used to happen when my sleep time, and she's awake in her day, and she called up, and four or five days later, and she's screaming on the other end. I said, what happened to you? So she's saying, you got it. They've confirmed you. They all loved you. They all loved you. I said, seriously? I'm sleepy. So I said, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So I thought, oh, now I've got a job. I've got some work to do. And I was just yeah. actually, I was very grateful to God because, you know, in COVID, everybody's sitting at home. There's no work happening. There's no, nobody's shooting, at least in India, nobody's shooting, doing anything. So I said, man, in COVID times, I've got a, an assignment. Then talking to her for a while because she was popping champagne and rejoicing over there for herself and, you know, being very happy for me. Then my, when my sleep broke and I kind of was awake completely and I was, we were still talking, we were talking for about, I think, an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> Right. Then it kind of, you know, sunk into me. I think, damn, I'm actually getting work to work in America, in Hollywood. And now listen, here's the thing. I'm not, I'm a Marvel, I'm a viewer. Okay, I'm an audience for any and every kind of film that I do go to watch. In that, Marvel is also one of them. But I'm not a psychotic Marvel fan, you know, who eats, breathes, dreams, and lives his life yeah. according to Marvel and Marvel characters, you know. I really appreciate that film, but I'll watch it. I'll maybe watch it twice also. I'll maybe watch it thrice also. Maybe I'll watch it again once on the fourth time on OTT. But that's it. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to sit down to discuss it and you know debate about characters and what was right and what was wrong in Endgame, Avengers. Who's right? Who's wrong? I don't even remember half the characters. It doesn't make a difference to me. Then it sunk in. I said, Oh, but I'm doing Marvel, man. It's the biggest uh, production studio in the world. So I said, that's pretty good and it's a good role and things like that. So I was happy about it and things like that. And 
that's how I landed Miss Marvel. Uh, so I got that frenetic call of hers around 5th or 6th September. August, I did send the tape. I think it was, I don't remember what August, but it, then 5th, 6th September, I got the call that everything's confirmed. And 12th October, I was on a flight to Atlanta, Georgia, in the US to shoot for Miss Marvel. And while we were shooting for Miss Marvel around January, December, or maybe Jan, we were on a Christmas break and uh, in America, and we get a, I get a, we all get a Zoom call. All the actors, I think that they planned out a Zoom call, and they said that um, we just want to tell you all that the characters, your character, all you guys, the Khan family, y'all are going to be now starring in Captain Marvel Part Two, which is called The Marvels. So we were like, oh wow! And I was thinking, was it? Damn, you know, we haven't even finished shooting Miss Marvel and we're already doing another one, and which is a feature film. And which feature film? Captain Marvel Part 2 and Captain Marvel, the first part, earned a big couple of billion dollars. Like Marvel Marvel Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, so I said, man, and we're in Part 2. But you know, you won't believe it, even before I left for Miss Marvel, <laughs> I went on to Disney Hotstar, which is in India. <laughs> I sat down and I watched the entire Marvel timeline. From the first wow. till the last, everything I said, not a word. So my friends would ask me, they're saying, what are you doing? I said, you're all at home because it's COVID. And I said, what are you doing? I said, I'm watching uh, Marvel Timeline. So they said, why would you watch that? I said, yeah, I need to know now what is this universe I'm getting into. You know, because see, I said, and which is the thing, I'm never nervous. I mean, I can, I can perform in English and Hindi and all that. I'm fine. But I'm very anxious because when I went abroad, Till then, I was only shooting in India, in Hindi, English, so mm. to speak. Uh, in India, I'm performing as an Indian sensibilities, my emotional con quotient, etc. The performance I'm pitching for an Indian audience. Hollywood, yeah. which is a world audience, and Marvel, which is a... Marvel is not only our whole world, but it's also, I think, in the galaxy. That's why we call it the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. It's all over the damn galaxy, man. So everybody's watching it. Anybody with two eyes and uh, connectivity, they're watching Marvel. Yeah. So my performance couldn't be Indian, so to speak. And that is mm. the thing when, uh, you know, she told me, my manager told me, she said, you know, the advantage you have, when, when they were trying to, she was trying to convince me to become her client. She said, the advantage you have is your, your looks, the fact that you are an Asian, South Asian, uh, your age, you know, and for your age, your looks, etc. And they were talking about the way I speak English, my accent. They say, it's not American because you don't have an American accent. It's not a British accent. But it's definitely not an Indian accent. Because Indians, yeah. depending on from which state they come, they tend to have a very pronounced India English accent from that mother tongue of theirs. And they say, you don't have that. You have a very neutral uh, uh, English accent which works brilliantly for us. I said, okay, great. And uh, so that's how I got it. And, you know, and then later I found out, which while shooting The Marvels, I got to know, because Brie Larson, Captain Marvel, we were all yeah. sitting together, and she tells me, she said, hey, I believe you sent one tape, your self-tape was just one take of yours you sent to uh, Sarah Haley, Finn, the casting director, when you were being cast for Miss Marvel. I said, yeah, why? She's saying they didn't have another level that, you know, now they will talk to you on the Zoom. Then they will have another audition with Disney and uh, these people. I said, no. So she's saying, hang on, you're, you're trying to tell me that you did one self-tape sitting in your house. And only one tape. You didn't do a second yeah. safety or anything. I said, no, I thought I got the first one right. I said, I'm sending it. I don't expect to come. I'm not going to waste my time over it. She's saying, do you realize you just sent one take and you landed the role of Yusuf Khan in Miss Marvel and now you're shooting the Marvels. She's saying it never happened. They, they, you have to go through at least three levels. And they love you exactly. just one thing that you did and you got the role. I said, yeah. I said, I'm also a superhero, man. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's how I got it. And um, I was so, I was very humbled by it or to be very honest, yeah. grateful, humbled. Because, you know, firstly, <clears throat> it was COVID. So in COVID yeah. time, I got a I got a job, good job, great job, and my thing was also that seeing that yeah, there's so many other great actors, Indians, you know, how yeah. did I get it? And I used to talk to this to my colleagues, actors over there, my directors, you know, 
and they said listen maybe this was your time maybe you've given your mm-hmm. time to the universe and your time has come you know and this was destined for you destined. i said well okay i'm just grateful humbled and now i'm enjoying the ride wow such a such a good journey so it's it's so good to hear and uh, also i'd like to ask uh, are you the first actor from india to star in the mcu i believe so i mean india oh, wow. as in so how, yeah how do you feel to have made such an achievement i'm not sorry sorry i'm not the only i was the first then there was a yes, second yes. Uh, uh, indian harish harish was uh, the second actor he starred in Sh- uh, shangchi i think he yes yes shangchi. he was the indian uh this thing for like uh, yeah so he was the same. but yeah i was the first in the marvel universe hmm. so how how does it feel to have made such an achievement like how do you reflect on it yaar honestly i haven't done anything to you know i mean i haven't gone and met anyone i haven't kissed anyone's ass <laughs> i haven't bribed anyone <laughs> it's not nepotism you know it's just yeah. nothing of that sort it's just that i mean you know something aligned like you know telling me this yeah. things aligned you know you've done your time and the universe believes that you're ready for it now so uh, it just happened so uh, i sorry now the stars were on your side yeah so yeah i mean it feels great um the process of uh, the, i mean what was it like it was see it's acting you know, the craft is the same mm-hmm. is just the setting is different the scale is completely different uh, also it was in english which is my first language my first language of comfort so i'm okay with that you know and um, i think what matched or what worked a lot for me was sensibilities i think my sensibilities were a lot in tune with the way they think you know and um, in terms of whether be it professionalism be it characterization interpreting the character the way he's going to do it uh con- also appreciative of the fact that they they were very open to my suggestions you know i would try to add a few words in hindi urdu you know so that it gives a little garnishing and they loved it they said yeah because a south asian i said because anybody who has this thing they will say something from their from their past you know i mean from their uh, social milieu you know so you could be talking in english and suddenly in, you know something goes wrong and you just say oh teri you know so these are things that because the character was uh, muslim so you know he would something would go wrong and he just go like ya allah you know so these yeah. are natural things and they love that they say yeah yeah please give us more give us more so it was like garnishing you know over the over yeah. the dish main dish so it was very nice so it, so yeah so i think predominantly it was the sensibilities that matched and i appreciate the fact that they were very receptive to my suggestions and of course the scale man i mean hollywood and not only hollywood the fact that it's marvel the scale that they shoot at i mean it's massive man it's massive it's unbelievable mind blowing planning yeah the planning that they put into because the scripts are ready about a year before the way they start doing the production planning whether it's to create a seat for a spaceship or to create the spaceship itself or then just later after everything in terms of shooting is done the way they do their visual effects and that, it's amazing it's insane so i i am that kind of person i love the discipline of work you know there there's of course the creativity and the fun part of it and all that the gratification of it but what really i really like about anything even my day to day life i really like discipline because i believe that you know when you've got things sorted and everything is planned out there are less chances for error and things going wrong and uh, there's a lot riding you know the millions and millions of dollars of production money that they're putting into it. so they plan extensively and there's very very little room for error over there i mean they plan outdoor shoots based on weather and their weather satellites are amazingly accurate so if like you just want to go out for a walk you know you time it you look at your weather app and it says it stop drizzling in 15 minutes and literally between 13 to 17 minutes the drizzling would stop so you could go out for a walk so they plan their yeah. shoots and so they say four days from now we're going to shoot outside in the field so i said but what if it rains this you know the weather i said it's not going to rain it can still happen it's not that it can't the chances yeah. but it's very unlikely because their satellites are 
I think it's a little bit sharper than ours. I mean, our satellites take a little time to figure things out. Oh, it's raining, it's raining, I it has to be. Having said which, I've only done Marvel, which is, you know, mm-hmm. huge money is huge. So maybe they are of that uh, nature, of that caliber, of that mindset, that mm-hmm. sense of professionalism and discipline and, you know, excellence. Uh, probably the not so big uh, 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 production, the independent films, maybe they're also a lot like us. Like if you say India, I mean, India, the big productions over here, they're equally maybe not as big as them, but they're equally, uh, you know, uh, well sorted out. Like, um, yeah. Excel Entertainment, Farhan Akhtar, Sid- Ritesh Sidwani, their production house, Karan yeah. Johar. So these big production houses, I'm sure Rohit Shetty and I work with them, but I'm sure these big production houses, they are very sorted. And please today, these yeah, people are really sorted now. It's not like the old days when I started my career in the year where everything was like, whatever happens will happen, you know. Yeah. It on whatever. It's not like that anymore, at least not with the big guy. So I'm sure that even abroad, that there must be smaller productions which don't have that kind of money and, you know, infrastructure to put behind it. And, but the fact is that they, they respect uh, professionals from every department. They give them their due time mm-hmm. and the due credit. Uh, most of the time, I'm guessing the due credit they, they do give. But um, over there, what I really like is that they respect the writers a lot, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah, everyone That's probably brilliant. should know that there was, yeah, because they, I don't know if everyone knows this, but we've just come out from, in the US from a massive uh, strike that the Writers Association yes. had, as well as then the Actors uh, Union, we joined them. And that went on for, I think, about five or six months. So I've always believed this since, since I've been a kid, probably watching Hindi films, you know, and English films. I've always said that, you know, an actor, okay, great, we've grown up watching Amitabh Bachchan, Shah Rukh Khan, whatever. They're great, you know. But the thing is that yeah. they translate the vision of the actor and director. So, the, yes. the of the writer and the director. Because the, it's finally the embryo, the seed is from the writer. The writer is so, the most important person. There is nobody bigger yeah. than the writer in terms of a film, you know. And like I, I, like I almost say it till you know, the cows come home and people are bored of hearing this from me. But I must say this to the audience that's listening to us just now. A good script can make Mohan Kapoor into a star. A bad script, Shah Rukh Khan cannot salvage. You cannot do a bad, bad script. Whatever you do, you cannot help. It will fail. But a good script yeah. can make a mediocre actor also a really good, get a good performance out of it. So the writer and then the director who translates the vision of that writer along with the rest of his team. So then there are the actors, the editor, the the music people, you know, everything. It all comes together. Art direction, very huge, costume, makeup, every department. So they they, they give due credit to um, uh, all these departments, to all the... Because the creative process, as we all know, is a collaborative process. One thing goes out of sync and it's disaster. You know, I, I, I compare it to that of an orchestra. So an orchestra, yeah. you know, whatever, 30-piece orchestra, everyone's playing their instruments, playing it to a certain pitch, to a certain note, to a certain degree of decibel. One guy decides, no, I want to play my flute a little longer or a little louder. Gaya. The full symphony, the concerto is out of sync and it's in the garbage. So yeah. similarly, filmmaking or any audiovisual thing is similar to that. Everybody has a role to play, a part to play. And everyone plays it to that part. And the director being the captain or the, you know, the conductor of that orchestra, he makes sure everyone does it to the, to the way he wants it. So, yeah, which is why finally people, uh, uh, you know, say that fortunately, unfortunately, the, the actors take all the credit, you know. Oh, man, that yeah. guy did such a fabulous. Are Baba, but the director and writer, you're forgetting them. Why isn't I first don't. the name of the writer coming? Why isn't second the name of the director coming and then realizing that the actor has done, you know, brought their vision to life. That is what it should be. But yeah, it's there. It's happening. It's happening here too. Hopefully better yes. and bigger. So also, um, apart from being an actor, you are also a voiceover artist. So you have uh, given 
giving your voice to prominent figures like Dwayne Johnson, Stan, and uh, also Marvel's one of most favorite characters, Doctor Strange. So tell us about your experience as a Hindi voiceover for Doctor Strange. Uh, so how did it fall into place, and uh, what what did you what was your thought process like? Wow, I I got Doctor Strange's voice. So hang on, the thing is that Miss Marvel and my uh, my journey in Hollywood happened only in 2020. My yeah. voicing uh, career began way back in the mid 1990s, and I've been doing this stuff since then. So you know things like Die Hard for Bruce Willis, Liam Neeson, uh, Jackie Chan, um, John Travolta. I I'm not sure, but maybe I think even Samuel Jackson. Uh, Dwayne Johnson, a uh, lot of them, you know, I've, I've done a couple of hundreds of uh, films, I've dubbed these Hollywood films, not only Hollywood, I've dubbed some Korean films into English, I've done, I've dubbed Tamil films into Hindi, um, I've done animation films, uh, characters in animation films, so I've been dubbing, uh, what you call dubbing is actually uh, voice artist, uh, I've been lending my voice to a lot of uh, actors playing different characters from Hollywood. So Doctor Strange was, I had uh, first done that where he just made an appearance in one of the Marvel films. It wasn't a full-fledged Doctor Strange film. So he had been introduced that and I did the voice for that. But because I had done it, my voice had worked for it, the studio in Marvel and all, they must have liked it. So they said, no, continue with that guy's voice. And that's what usually happens if one voice works. Everybody, not only me, everybody's voice stays the same for across all the new projects. So then when the Doctor Strange film came, I was obviously, uh, my voice was cast for that. Uh, so the funny thing was that when I was shooting in Atlanta for Miss Marvel, so something happened and, you know, casually when you're hanging around doing nothing because it's COVID time. So when you're not shooting, you're sitting with your mask like this. So people would, uh, maybe all be chatting with people. Uh, so some director or production guy or some executive producer something talking to me and they would ask my, whatever, you know, they, from my point of view or something they'd be talking and suddenly they say, hey, we just read about you. You are the official Indian voice for all the Doctor Strange part. I said, uh, yeah. They said, holy crap. I said, yeah, now you're Doctor, uh, now you're uh, Yusuf Khan, uh, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel's dad. How's that going to work? I said, I don't know. I said, you Marvel guys have to figure that out, you know. Do you want me to do Doctor Strange voice or do you want me to do Yusuf Khan? So I said, I don't think they'll overlap, but uh, yeah, but my voice is known now over the years. I've been at it for 30 years. So my voice is known. So like, I remember I did one, the the Multiverse of Madness or something. There was some film of Doctor Strange. As yeah. you can see, I don't, I'm not too much of a Marvel guy. I don't even know the name of the film. I haven't watched it yet. The Multiverse of Madness. So I was supposed to dub that, but I was in New York and I got yeah. COVID. So I couldn't come back in time and they had they'd done everybody else's uh, dubbing only mine remained and they said that you have to, the day I was supposed to land the next day I was supposed to start dubbing and I I go do I do it pretty fast so I thought we'd finish in a day or so but because I got COVID and it was such a bloody rubbish mild COVID man for which three days I couldn't leave New York I couldn't leave the bed um, you know and those three days I lost the film I couldn't do it but here's the thing that people recognize the voice and they suddenly said, but this is not Mohan Kapoor's voice in Doctor Strange. They know yeah. my voice and they know Doctor Strange is Mohan's voice. And obviously they must be liking it, which is why they... So it's like seeing, hearing anybody or like any actor, you you know, like an Amitabh Bachchan, Shah Rukh Khan, you know their voice. You've grown up hearing their voice. You appreciate their voice. It's a package. The face, the performance, the voice, everything is part of a package. Now suddenly you take away Amitabh Bachchan's voice and you put some idiot Mohan Kapoor's voice in there. They're going to say, what the hell? Who's this guy here? We want Bachchan's voice, you know. So similarly, I guess they appreciate my voice in uh, Doctor Strange and all the other characters that I do. And suddenly when it's not there, so they all reacted, you know. They say, hey, what the hell? We don't want that. But it kind of, you know, life has to go on. One Mohan Kapoor does not dictate the release of a Marvel film, especially something as big as Doctor Strange. So, yeah, so I must also say that, you know, uh, it's very humbling. And again, I'm very grateful that... An actor's life, you're not always constantly busy. You're not shooting all the time. So in those times of when there used to be no work, this voicing, being a voice artist, this really helped. It helped me professionally. It helped me financially. 
and it helped me as an actor because as an actor i believe that you know in fact i started voicing to train my voice to practice dubbing the art of dubbing because back then a lot of indian stuff would be dubbed after the filming is over so i said and people are very scared of dubbing i'm not scared of dubbing because i'm pretty good at it but even back then i was pretty okay good good at it and i said that uh, no i want to practice so that you know because it dubbing is your voicing a person's performance that's not you you have not performed that he has performed it but he's given you the visual template now you have yeah. to match the mood although the mood is in a different language it's in different vocabulary so you have to match the mouth so which the dubbing producer they're sitting there and they say okay let's change the script there because this word in hindi because they might say three words in english to complete a sentence but that three words does not make sense in in hindi yeah. so you have to add a fourth word so either you have to speak faster or then you have to rewrite it to make sure even though you change the complete words but it has to mean the same thing you know yeah. so it's a very technical thing it's technical it's creative it is it's it's tough at some level i can understand why some people are scared of doing it but i guess i've been doing it for so long now and there's a certain logic i believe to it i think it's all pardon the uh acting brash about it but i i think that if you just approach anything with logic you know you can crack it you know you can crack anything everything has a logic um so so yeah so you know voicing used to really help me uh get my act together in terms of voice training voice culture you know and you're performing it's giving you a chance so even if you're not on camera but you're on a microphone so you're performing through a microphone so if you are if the character on screen is doing something like this main to aari jaan le lunga yes i've heard I mean, dubbing people you know the guy is doing this but their voice is going main to aari jaan le lunga abe what are you doing are you singing him a song yeah. are you making love to him what are you doing i mean get that anger feel it you can see his veins standing here he can hear main to aari jaan le lunga मैं तुम्हारी चाय yeah. ले लूंगा अरे क्या कर रहा है यार तुम जान ले लोगे या तुम उसको चाय पिला रहे हो व्हाट आर यू डूइंग सो या सो या सो आई बिलीव इज अ ह्यूज अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर ग्रोथ फॉर लर्निंग व्हिच अगेन आई गॉट एंड लाइक आई सेड दैट यू नो व्हेन यू डोंट हैव वर्क सडनली दिस कम्स अप एंड यू नो इट इट टाइड्स योर नॉट एक्टिंग फेज इन फ्रंट ऑफ अ कैमरा बाय गिविंग यू द फाइनेंशियल सिक्योरिटी व्हेन यू आर जस्ट डूइंग वॉइसिंग फॉर अनदर पर्सन इन अनदर कैरेक्टर So that's been an interesting ride, and um, yeah, it's been fun. Everything's fun because you know, I mean, how many people have a job like mine? You wake up in the morning and you get to play another character. I mean, it's like you yes. you're living out your childhood every day. You know, you're just being a different. Today I'm a cowboy. Tomorrow I'm a daku. Third day I'm a police inspector. Fourth day I'm a doctor. Fifth day I'm playing somebody's father. You know, it's fun. It's fun. So, along with acting in films, you have also acted in numerous TV shows, and um, as you said right now, you've also been a voiceover artist for years and years now. So, I want to ask you: In which uh, sector have you faced some of the biggest challenges? Well, to be honest, the, I, I would I would like to define what I consider a challenge. The challenge for me personally is being employed. Yeah. Have work, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I don't have a godfather. I don't have the advantage of nepotism. I wish I did because I would exploit it to the maximum. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't have it. So I have to do it all on my own. And fortunately or unfortunately, I've never had to go out and really ask for work and things like that. Though I should do it because uh, it'll just keep me more employed and give me more money. But I guess I'm very I'm happy with very whatever I get because you know just that's me. And I refuse a lot of work because I find it total garbage. And I said, "No, yeah." Somebody said, "Do it." No, the money is okay. I said, "Yeah, everything can't be about money. You know, I have to yeah. sleep with myself at night." And Definitely. you know, you can't wake up saying, "Shit, I have to go do that nonsense again." Oh uh, man. <laughs> so you know you just say i'll i'll draw the line at some point so between me drawing the line and then not casting me so i think the biggest challenge for me is not the work because like even when everyone yeah. even in hollywood they would say so you finding this challenging is it very tough is it i said no i said i don't know why people think acting is this big thing you know i think it's you got to be really stupid if you think acting is tough 
Yeah, it's tough yeah. when you're doing tough roles, like you're doing Brad Pitt's role, Benjamin Button. You're doing uh, uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, what was that? Life is like a box of chocolate. Um, Tom Hanks when he's playing Forrest uh-huh. Gump. That's a tough yes. role, you know, because you're playing, a, you're doing something that's out of your comfort zone. Uh, Koi mil gaya in India, Rithik Roshan being yeah. Koi mil gaya. Or you know the kind of acting, the the performances that uh, Manoj Bajpai does, Ravi yes, yes. Yadav does, Nawazuddin Siddiqui. Those are guys who put in so much more than just what is written on the script. Now, that's exactly. what I consider acting. So if you ask me to rate myself on a scale of ten, I would say I'm about three. You know, no, definitely because, not. Sure. No, because otherwise, what I'm, what I Honestly, it's not my fault because at some point, I guess it's the work that I've got. It, the kind of yeah. roles I've got, I don't, I don't see what Manoj Bajpayee or Nawazuddin Siddiqui could have done to the roles that I've got, which I have done and they could have done it differently. I don't think it's a straight ass role. You just play it like that, man. So what else can yeah. you do? But when you get those multi-layered and, you know, angst ridden this, that and the other, oh man, you can do so much. Unfortunately, I haven't got a chance to do that so that I can prove what I can do. In, but in everyday characters, you do get some kind of layering. You know? Like Miss Marvel had a lot of layering for me. Uh, hostages had a lot of layering for me. Um, yeah, so top of mind, I can think of a couple of these. So some of these, they really, you know, they're very gratifying. So you come back feeling really good. And believe you me, I've done a lot of... Sorry? So you feel satisfied from your inside. Completely. And believe you me, there have been times where I've done... One one particular instance I remember, I have done a film, it was a short film. You won't believe how much I charged for it. I charged one rupee because I loved the script so much. I said, I'll do yeah. it. For, I, I didn't tell the guy. They said, but we can't afford you and all that. I said, let's discuss money later. I said, I love the script so much. Let's do it. So the day we finished shooting, so he said, he's saying, yeah, you're going now, but what, what about the money? I said, yeah, you have to give me. He's saying, I said, it's, it's a... I'm asking you for something really big and you cannot refuse it. So he said, yeah, tell me. So I said, what I'm going to ask you, I want you to give it to me with love and to give it to me with respect. So he said, yeah, yeah, of course. So he said, but just don't ask for too much and all. I said, no, I will. So he said, oh, how much? He said, I want one rupee. He said, what? I thought he heard wrong. He said, what? He said, no, no, don't be stupid. I said, no, I genuinely mean it. I said, because I know you have a financial thing. You you don't have the money. I'd rather you put that money into making a good film. So whatever you need to, you know, do that. I said, you do that, put the money in for marketing, promotions, do all that. I said, don't worry about it. So I've done things for less to no money if the role is good. And then there are roles which you say, no, yeah, I mean, it's a commercial setup. I think you can afford to pay me and I think I deserve to be paid so much. So I'll take that money. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is the, the the role, the character. You know, if something challenges you and it excites you, you're willing to do anything. And not only me, why me? Anybody would be willing to do it. And I'm sure every actor out there, even who are big actors, they must have done something to, you know, they must have said, okay, forget the money, forget that, forget this. Everybody does it, you know. I mean, it's natural. So, yeah, I guess. So, uh, throughout your career, you have worked in several popular movies and web series. Uh, uh, would you like to tell us which has been your most memorable role or any favorite director or co-star that you have enjoyed working with and you're looking forward to work with them again? So, I'll be very honest. I'm a very practical guy. My career in the community, I call it the communications business because audiovisual communication can be film, it can be television, it can be now, as they call it, streaming services. Uh, it could be a live show, it could be a game show, it could be, I've been a radio jockey, I've done live shows on radio, I've done that. There is nothing that I haven't done in the performing arena. But before I got into being a performer, I was working in advertising, which was behind the camera. So it was still a creative communication uh, job and a process. So somewhere I believe that I understand the creative uh, uh, process and probably uh, the communication methodology or the syntax that is required to communicate. And um, so, sorry, so you were, what did you ask? You said that... Um, 
one of your memorable roles and right, along so with about that the roles and actors so yeah. everything i have done like i said earlier i mean you know i i will not pick up any job that i didn't want to do if i and if i've done it and it was really trashy or not so great it's because i wanted to do it it could have been personal reasons you know that i want to work with this director whether the role is small i don't mind but i want to do or i want to do something where i'm seen in the same frame with a sharuk khan and you know i wanted to work with the director like farah khan so even if the role was nothing but she had the she had the love and the grace to cast me because she said that you know you you so sweet you want to do it so she cast me in a film like happy new year which i had no role and she told me she said i have no role for you you are like furniture in my film and i did it and a lot of people said what the hell why did you do it i said i just wanted to do it yeah i wanted to do it i wanted to be in a big film what does it feel like to be and they were so gracious about it sharuk khan abhishek bachchan farah they were all so wonderful you know they don't treat you like a some small guy or something they treat mm. everybody not only me everybody they treat so well with so much love and respect so it's a nice feeling you know to do something like that and you look back in i mean tomorrow when i'm an old man older man you know i can also laugh and turn around and say that, hey i also did one full on commercial film you know so yeah it's fun so which what is memorable everything is memorable and i'll be very honest yeah. it's a very cliche answer but it's all very memorable because everything has held some some special uh, place in my life in my heart when i did it you know not to really count all of them over 30 year journey is a bit much but i mean you know like you never expected to work with somebody like a sudeep mishra i did a film with him called inkar which was about a person yeah. in an advertising agency that was a phenomenal and to work with sudeep mishra i mean the guy is you know he's legendary in his own phenomenal in all the work he's done yeah so to do that and then him calling his i mean the producers calling and saying that we'd like you to uh, you know cast you in hostages now hostages was very interesting because i had just finished watching uh, the israeli origin hostages yes, yes. You know, I just yes. finished watching it, and about three, four days later, I get a call saying that we want to cast you for this uh, show. It's an original, it's an Israeli show called Hostages. I said, "Holy crap!" I said, "I just finished watching that." I said, "Which role?" So they said, "This one." I said, "Uh, oh, okay, okay." I said, "Yeah, that's also a good role." You know? So yeah. I said, "Great." So, so that was fun, and then again, it was working with Sudhir. Now that was also a layered role, like I just said earlier. So that was fun. So everything has had its own reasons of why I did it. So. like i may have done a daily soap opera on a tv channel so it's not memorable because the character was great or something but i will never i'm not going to give half hearted attempts to doing my job because you never know what work of yours is seen for another guy to cast you so you must give your best every time every time you have to give your best because you never know who's going to watch you and say oh man Though he's acting in one crappy show, or he's doing this, or he's doing that, but what he's doing is really good. Maybe we can explore him or at least. Exactly. So I've always given my best. So everything has been memorable that way. But something memorable where I will, in my old age, I mean, I will talk about <laughs> it. No, nothing, nothing that great. I mean, everything never. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm very practical that way. Maybe because, like I said, that I started the old conversation thing. I've worked in advertising. So for me, I never set out to be an actor. I, I, I'm an actor by chance, by luck, by God's grace, and maybe somebody who, up there who loves me. So uh, it just things just keep falling into place. One game show happened that got me noticed. I got a film, then I got TV shows, then I got radio jockey, then I got live events, then I got this, then I got that. And, you know, life just kept on going. At one point, I got bored of being an yeah. actor because I said, "What crap am I doing?" So you know, I don't have. illusions about myself you know i may yes. have done a marvel production or but if you ask me where are you i mean india i you are a marvel actor i am a marvel actor in my head i am not disney hotstar but in the market i am another actor yeah. who's waiting for a call to get work let's be real about it you know no point yes. because problem is that people start they look in the mirror and the mirror shows you what you are but what you choose to see is what your mind tells you you think oh man i think i look Like God, so I should be doing the roles Rithik does. Sure, I <laughs> can't, you know, because you're not, you don't have nepotism on your side. But that <laughs> thing aside, that aside, you know, you, and you might just be better than uh, Rithik for all you know, you know. But the yeah. point is that luck has a huge part to play in it. 
and then you are hard work. Once you've once you've got the break, then it's it's all your hard work and whole load of other things. In today's day and age, it's your social media presence, your networking, and parties and all, which I can't do, which is another bad thing for me. So you know, I don't have too much stacked up for me. It's a lot against me. So I don't party. I don't hobnob. I don't call people up to kiss their ass. Yeah, I love people. I respect people. But if you love me and you think I'm good for my job, then you'll call. Me. You know, and yeah. I'll, I'll audition for it. I don't have any shame or ego for auditioning. Why not? You know, it's like leaving yeah. a visiting card. Won't you leave your visiting card? So leaving a photograph or doing an audition tape is is completely normal. Uh, I think it's completely normal in Hollywood. Everybody does it. Now in India, everybody is doing it. So I don't see why anyone should feel bad about it. Old timers, old timer actors, they feel. Are I have done three hundred films. Why can't? Why do you need me to audition? Well, no shit, Sherlock. You may have done three hundred films, but you know it's not the character we are looking for. We want to see whether you can do the character we have envisioned for you or for somebody play it. So I think it's very fair. And um, so memory-wise, everything is a memory when I'm asked about it. Otherwise, they all served its purpose during that time. And like in Hindi, they say, you know, "Rat gayi baat gayi." I don't sit down and. I don't mull over the failures and I don't gloat over the achievements because it was something I was good. I was grateful. It's done. Now what? What next? Yeah. On to the next. One has to be real. Yeah, because one has to be real. Otherwise, you'll never imagine me today if I sit down and say oh, I'm a Marvel actor. In India, I want better roles. I want more money. Why? That's stupid yeah. to even think like that. You know, you have to be real because. That is different. If you want to charge more money in Hollywood, do that because you're a Marvel actor. But that's got no bearing in India. In India, it's a different ball game altogether. Your equity in this market is what it is. Yeah, it has a little yeah. plus point that oh, you're now a Marvel actor. But finally, it's all economics, yeah. And it's somebody who believes whether you have it in you to. Yeah. You know, so. So today we are living in the age of artificial intelligence, and uh, as you have spoken earlier, that you have just seen the writer strike in Hollywood. So, what do you feel about artificial intelligence, and uh, do you think it can impact the entertainment industry in the future? Yeah. Whatever little I know of it, uh, I'm not too savvy. I don't know how to spell technology. So, artificial intelligence is technology at <laughs> another level. So uh, I don't know much, but what I, whatever little bit I know of, of course, it's not only going to impact the entertainment industry; it's going to impact our personal lives, because one has yeah. already started hearing about the way you know there are all these deep fake uh, videos coming out of actors, yeah. politicians, you know, you know somebody has stuck out Obama speaking something, so it's his voice, his mouth, his face, everything you see, and you're thinking, oh man, Obama said that, nobody has it. But for the common man to figure that out, it's not going to be easy. Only somebody who knows how to decipher this will see, understand, and then if they have the technological wherewithal, they can break it down to say that see, this was a deep fake. This has been adjusted, edited, etc., whatever. So AI, of course, it is going to uh, impact uh, entertainment. I mean, look, here's the thing. That's what our unions in uh, the US are fighting. They're saying that tomorrow you shoot because after everything that we shoot in the costume that we are. We have to go into a room where it's got some like seventy, eighty, ninety cameras, those DSLR cameras, and you just have to stand there, frozen still for four, five seconds, and all those cameras, literally three sixty degrees, three sixty degrees, there are over a couple of hundred cameras. They all click your pictures. So now they have a composite image of you, and based with that and computer graphics, they can make you do say anything. Now that is basic VFX. Now imagine with artificial intelligence what they'll be able to do. They don't need me. They don't need my physical body at all. So they can create anything. I'll say, but hang on. So for example, let's say for example, Miss Marvel. If, yes. God willing, we come out with a season two. And for some reason they say, hey, we don't want more. But they, because I am contracted to them, they can have an artificial intelligence imagery of me, and that guy can that image will act out the entire scene. So what happens to you? So it's very important that the people who are in the business, people who are policy makers, uh, audience, audience. I mean, can't give them too much this thing, but they should just be a little responsible. Take the time before they react when they see something, especially when it's got to do with political 
social anything news like that they should be a little mm. bit more patient and a little bit more understanding to say you no know, question things don't just assume that oh but i've seen it how do i know it's ai or not exactly since you don't know it's ai or not give credence to the fact that it could be an or not so wait a while just wait a while and let's see so it's very important that the public should just have a little bit of patience for that in terms of policy makers they should understand that you know ai is something that can affect them also back in the yes. day there was watergate after that it's been fake news now it's ai it's anything can happen look it just takes one person to decide he's got to be in his bonnet against you and he can do yeah. anything he wants and ruin your life your career your family life whatever and that's disgusting it's so bloody unfair and in today's short term memory of social media how are you going to prove yourself and how much can you shout on social media to prove yourself who's there to listen because once that image is formed in their mind they're not going to bother about thinking about you again you may come back and they say ah now he's saying now he's just trying to clear his name oh she's just saying that because that video of hers has come up cry yeah. loud don't be stupid man so be careful judge things for what they are uh be careful what videos you share with whom what videos you take of yourself where you post it don't download apps you don't know about you have to be very particular now because while you got everything at your disposal but a lot of those things are so to speak for a lack of better word carcinogenic you know technology yes. can be carcinogenic and it can really yes. affect you mentally physically financially you know, financially of course you know, we can take all your money yes. you don't want that So if you don't want your yeah. money getting robbed, why would you want your reputation being robbed? Yeah. So, uh, do you feel that cinema can be a force for social change, and uh, do you wish to be part of any such uh, movie in the coming future? Look, I don't think movies will cause a morcha or a crusade on the streets. A movie, yeah. a book, a play. um a recording these are things that can stir emotions it can stir your thought process but is that going to take out a morcha no otherwise there must have been so many films in the world that should have already done that there have been some that have had a positive change like i know that there was a film called the constant gardener which was about unethical drug trials in the african subcontinent and the un i believe they got wind of it they saw that film and there was a ban put on unethical drug trials in in africa in india i have been privileged enough to do a film called uh, ummeed which means hope again based on unethical drug trials in india because it's a very huge problem in india and the public doesn't know about it at all it's a massive problem so a film was made its film is ready but we haven't got a censor certificate because the censor saying we don't know what to do with this film should we pass it as adults should we ban this film should we make it tax free so they are confused they, they don't want to give a censor certificate and the problem is not because of the content of the film the problem is what are they addressing they are addressing the pharma lobby the pharma lobby is a big dangerous monster out there so they don't want to go against that because foreign pharma companies are coming testing their uh their new found drugs on hapless tribal poor people living in small small areas who don't know what is the, what they're doing to them they can't do this yeah, in america do. because in america they're not accountable over here in yeah. america they have to pay them insurance they have to pay them their medical fees this that they can be sued they won't do that there so they come to poor countries like india africa africa hopefully it stop now in india this is still going on rampant young children tribal children and for what 500 rupees there are case studies of people who have done it for two samosas the family elder father has done it for two samosas okay test on my child or a bottle of country liquor because they don't know better right they don't know better and that's why it's not illegal it's unethical it's unethical yes. so do films can films films can definitely cause awareness it can cause uh, it can start a dialogue you know now like there was this film come come out about animal so people are talking yes. about misogyny and the the whole uh, the anger the whatever i mean i've seen the films they're talking about the way women have been treated over there and things like that so 
the sad thing is don't judge a film because of that don't say what is this nonsense because a storyteller is telling you a story yaar everything yeah. has a hero and has a villain now how do you want to show the villain is up to you no ramayan yes. showed ravan in a certain way animal is showing their villain in a certain way you don't yeah. have to subscribe to them no but it will influence people yaar bad things influence people i get it but that means no story can be told let's all talk about good movies only then who addresses the elephant in the room then nobody and like i've always said when my ad uh, the guy who was my ad guru mr alec padam see god rest his soul he's always said he's in the best sensor in the whole world is your eyelids you don't like something shut it but today yeah. people don't want to do that they want to hold everyone else accountable oh so and so actor yeah. smokes he's got a bad influence on children are but the actor also does good things why doesn't your children do the good things problem is yeah. that the family the family individual family unit has stopped taking responsibility for what they are meant to do it's not the actors them responsibility to make sure how your child grows up here yeah. when you know that there is a sensor certificate of this nature you know what the film is about don't go watch it you want to go and watch it first day first show with your girlfriend or your wife or family that that's your problem why don't you wait friday saturday sunday hear the reviews hear what people are saying word of mouth then monday decide whether you want to see a movie like that or not where the yeah. hero is telling the woman to lick my feet or whatever nonsense but that is got to be seen in a context of the story that which is why stand up comedians are pointed fingers at but you are not understanding the guy is talking whatever he says is got to do understand the joke he is not attacking yeah. you I and mean, of course there are people who also attack you on a personal level that's stupid i'm not talking about that i'm talking of a of a of a class act uh, stand up comic so when he says something what is the trigger what is the uh, the content you have to analyze that people have to have yeah. that brain to analyze it the minute you don't know uh, haven't we heard so many times half the crowd hasn't even seen a movie because the film is not even released yet but they've taken out morchas and they've done rioting in a uh, in a movie hall they've broken down the movie hall posters glass windows they've attacked the director slapped him made his painted his face black You haven't even seen the damn film, damn it! What are you getting so excited about? Watch the film, then take a call, no? Exactly. You just want to do it. So, can movies affect? Of course, movies do influence. But the the point is, who gets influenced? How they get influenced? These are all open to debate. And I alone, I don't think I'm uh, uh, capable or the right person to. Think. But I have my opinions on that. Some of which I have just voiced. and um, i don't think it's fair to blame movies or ban movies or you know even this whole thing like i i agree with a lot of people who say that the concept of a censor certificate who the yeah. hell are seven and a half people to decide whether you can watch a movie and i cannot and you can you can watch but your brother cannot or your sister what you put yeah. out a rating over there saying that or you put out a certificate that says this film is this it is advised that people only over the age of this can watch it yes um, you can't keep uh, you, everybody has to be accounted for today lgbtq yeah. plus xyz plus uh, some religious group plus somebody else plus parents of a child plus girls who don't want to be treated by horribly by their boyfriends etc etc in fact just today i was telling my cook because she brings her son uh, home and he's like about 2 3 years or something like that so she was telling me yesterday he created such a fuss on the street they'd gone out and he wanted a bicycle so she saying no not just yet i'll get it to you after some time he threw such a fit he lay down on the middle of the road kicking and screaming i'm not going to leave till i get the bicycle so she think we had to get him the bicycle i said look fair enough a child wants it this thing and that whether you can what if you couldn't afford it what would you have done what would you have done yeah. you would have let him cry slapped him two three times and then put him in the car and or in the auto rickshaw or whatever and then got him home i said yeah. but the point is you gave into my said problem is not just extrapolate this situation this boy is growing up knowing that i can ask for anything and i will get it yeah he opens my refrigerator things that are lying there for me He will wants to eat that. She says, "No, you can't have it." He'll throw his see fit till I come there and I tell her, "Okay, listen, you play the good cop, I'll play the bad cop." So I will look at him and say, "No, don't you do that." He gets scared and he keeps quiet. But that's so unnecessary. Why should one do that? And that's not my bloody responsibility. That you, as a parent, you are meant to show, make sure that he 
handles himself properly or you make sure that he understands how he's meant to handle himself because these very often these kind of misplaced sense of priorities a child grows up with and tomorrow when his girlfriend rejects him his attitude is how dare she reject me yeah and that's when the acid that's when the yeah. acid attacks happen that's when they'll stab them in public what shit and now who are you going to blame some film that he saw come on man what what did he do for all the years before he watched the film who shaped his personality before he that film released for him to become like this one film made him so mad then there's something wrong with him if one film could do that to him it's crazy and there are so many films that do good things munna bhai mbbs how come nobody talks about that yeah pk how come it nobody talks about that so many good films yeah mahatma versus gandhi or the, all these there's so many films which have a dialogue to it but nobody is willing because they want to take the easy way out brush the responsibility off so blame the movies because we are soft targets right yeah and so, which is why uh, actors don't like to talk which is why they don't like to talk about issues yeah. because it's not one one sharukh khan or one amir khan who's getting uh, uh, pointed out his film gets banned the theaters get attacked the director gets slapped and then nobody wants to do that because he has got his money industry is was hoping to bank on that so that the industry does well but 500 people associated with that film they suffer because the film has been banned yeah. or it's taken off the thing because some religious fanatic group idiots who have not even seen the film who don't understand what storytelling is what the nuances of storytelling are they have decided in their illiterate uh, comatose that we want to do this what are you going to do about that so yeah. obviously no star is going to open their mouth and talk about any subject they go hell with it man that's not my responsibility kal tum bolega tumhare bete ko maine influence kiya what nonsense yes so also uh, what do you think like you have been in the industry for so long for more than 30 years so uh, you have seen a lot of uh, things being an insider from the industry so uh, what do you think is the biggest challenge uh, that we are facing in indian cinema today i think it's a little bit more of the same that we just discussed and i think it's about being able to tell stories with a conscience that does full justice to the storytelling you know we are too yes. worried i mean i just uh, I, i read the headline of some article where uh, javi dakhtar saab said that you know if he had to write the shole scene in the mandir where you know dharminder is behind lord shiva's statue and he's joking with hema malini who's asking for a good husband in front of and he imitated thinking that he's shiva and like oh ladki why don't you marry viru he think i'd never write that scene in today's day and age because he's yes. like, people won't be able to understand and there's so many old films you know sometimes you get nostalgic you want to watch an old film you watch that and you wonder dang if this film had to release this time day of age some women's group some religious group somebody or the other there would be riots man they would kill they would kill it's scary and javed akhtar sahab is also funnily enough he's also talked about animal and he's saying this is a very unhealthy and very scary situation where a filmmaker yeah. has to show you know the kind of thing about a woman being told lick my feet and all that oh, come on man let's stop being such prudish thing that's a, that, that's the character why do you understand that but that has an influence on uh, people but everything has an influence on people yeah everything yeah. has an influence tomorrow if, if some big superstar his character starts burping and farting on screen you you telling me that you're going to start burping and farting in real life oh, come on that's stupid no but yeah. murder and robbery and this and that is more enticing to people yeah but then who's going to take responsibility for individual films books yeah nonsense so so uh... i definitely think that there should be a more more a healthier approach to to everybody not only yeah. I, i'm not saying that there are some films that you know that it just isn't required you don't need to show so much or say so much there are better ways of being i agree to that you know so there has to be a balanced yeah. approach you cannot be completely saying that no i will say whatever i want to say in my story no can you be at the other end no that you can only say so much who the hell are you to tell me i can only say so much yeah. so there has to be a self censorship you know somebody has to yes. figure out what is that Definitely. so it's a very fine line and it's a 
it's a debate that and especially in today's day and age with social media with you know people voicing their opinions and their rights you know everybody standing up for their rights somebody has to do something about it policy makers and you know whoever board of certification somebody has to do something because this cannot go on you know everything cannot yeah. be passed off on one side or the other side that's ridiculous so throughout this interview you have uh, mentioned about nepotism quite a few times so yeah. so this uh, interview wouldn't be completed without asking you this controversial question Absolutely. what do you feel about nepotism in uh, indian I cinema i think nepot i think okay so facts are facts nepotism exists yeah. but nepotism doesn't yeah. exist solely and wholly only in the film or television or the creative arts industry nepotism is exists everywhere nepotism is not i don't think nepotism is necessarily uh, blood blood oriented like you know fam father gives to son and etc because well quite obvious so here's the thing if your dad has a business my dad has a business he's going to give it to me unless he has an issue with me or i have an issue with yeah. his business or i want to pursue a different career that's a different thing but his first thing would be to give it to his his progeny so that the line continues and it stays within the family if by definition that is nepotism okay so it's nepotism when it's not a bloodline related thing so for example one filmmaker let's take his name because he's been called the you know the flag bearer of nepotism yeah, karan yeah. for example if karan yeah so if karan johar has a script and he wants to cast ranveer singh or shahrukh khan or kajol and alia bhat or whoever okay and he wants to put his money in or he'll get financiers to put their money in etc etc and he is liable to that film being a hit or a flop okay some people is no he is not liable because the financiers distributors who bought the film who put the film screening the film they lose the money the exhibitor lose money x y z people lose money he is made his money okay let's go into that if he is made his money today that film goes becomes a flop why because the audience says nepotism mere ko nahi dekhne ka hai picture mm -hmm. okay so the film is a flop once it will happen twice it will happen third time it will fourth time even karan johar will think no or financiers yeah. will think of giving karan johar money so the exactly the make, audience is caught so the basic thing about nepotism that it exists yes but who the hell is anybody to tell karan johar whether he should cast x y z or he should cast abc that's his story that's his script that's his vision that's his money that's his reputation on the line and that's his future as a filmmaker on the line so today somebody will give him money to make the film tomorrow they will forget it man if you are casting ranveer singh we don't want it or the fact that you cast ranveer and sharukh so much that now people don't want to see your film because history is showing that the past 12 films of yours are flop so we don't want to put money don't put money so that's the call he takes but who is responsible for the success or failure of nepotism the paying audience so the same people who are yeah. criticizing and bringing up this topic of nepotism they should shut up go into the bathroom because that's where they should be with their faces and look in the bloody mirror take a good long hard look and say who the hell is responsible for nepotism you stop watching yeah. you know the announcement is made the poster has come out the song is released you know that xyz actor and abcd producer director are making a film bullshit i don't want to see it so day one only you know you so don't go and so many films in the recent mm -hmm. past have proven that fact so you don't watch it when it releases on ott then when you feel when you slimily you will go and watch the film because now it's free to you yeah but there's nothing <laughs> to it because you're paying a yearly charge on ott so you'll watch it and then you'll might even yeah. secretly like the film but you don't have the balls to turn around and say oh i like the film i didn't want to pay yes, money and watch exactly. it obviously but you would but you will watch it you'll not admit it but you'll watch it so everything finds its way finally in the market space in your mind space everything does but it's just so bloody unfair to keep saying nepotism and how come you only think of nepotism in the film industry and actor director producer what about choreographer what about uh, cameraman that is director of photography yeah. what about music directors what about fight action director what about, what about makeup artist costume designer nobody says manish malhotra are karan johar only take manish malhotra's costume because he's good at what he does so obviously yeah. you take him why do you buy colgate so why don't you buy vico vajradanti because you like colgate 
Colgate works for yeah. you. So you'll buy Colgate. Or should I now turn around and say, no, Colgate and you, you have some nepotism, some family connection. Why are you buying Colgate? Why are you not buying Vajbik or Vajiradan? Everything has a link, Baba. And people have stopped understanding. Unless you're turning around today and saying that now there should be OBC, uh, SC, ST, OBC quota in filmmaking also. So you have two cars, one scheduled car, one scheduled drive, one OB, other backward class person in your car. What? Well, nonsense. Where does this nonsense <laughs> stop, man? You can rename yeah. streets, you can change the name of a city. Now you want to cast these people. Also. Come on, man. When are we going to get the caliber of our lives up? I mean, do we have to wallow in this gutter of mediocrity all the bloody time and whitewash our existence by saying, Oh, but we are a great nation because people respect our leaders. What about you? You are a fool. You are a bloody idiot. If the leader is doing a good job, if you think he's doing a good job, then make him proud. Don't make an ass of yourself in the world forum now. When people think about you and look at you, you're making an idiot of yourself. Why isn't the film released? Because it hurts their sentiments. What? Hurts your sentiments? Are you mad? So, and it brings me to the film vaccine war that I did. People are not willing yeah. to give vaccine war a chance because the maker made Kashmir Files, which is a monster hit. And what was their problem hmm. with Kashmir Files? Please tell me. And I must tell you, Vivek and I are dear friends. And I've had a lot of disagreement, disagreements with him on some of his political uh, uh, stance uh, that he takes, on some of his ideologies, on things. We have a lot of disagreements. But he takes the time. I mean, like any mature discussion, you sit down, you call the person up and you talk to the person. You're not screaming and shouting your thing. You explain... But the point is, nobody is willing to accept that they can be wrong anymore. You know, yeah. everybody thinks that the sun shines out of their ass. You can't be right all the time. So understand, yeah. listen, talk, and if you don't know, read up, find out. Don't go for what you're, everything that you read and see in the media, do not fall for it. Even if you think it's right, and even if it may be right, double check, now. what's the problem? So at the end of the day, otherwise you will feel like a fool that thing, ah, so vaccine war, because he made Kashmir Files, and Kashmir Files was a BJP propaganda film. Are you trying to diss out the thousands, lakhs of Kashmiri Pandit brothers and sisters and families who have suffered so much? Are you saying that was a figment of their imagination? What nonsense. And if somebody is showing it, you will not watch it. Or the people who watched it are fools. You will go and watch, uh, what was that film? Schindler's List about the Jews, yeah. the Holocaust, what Hitler did. But you don't want to watch anything that has got to do with your people. Why? The vaccine war. You have a problem. Why? Because you feel that he's talking about the government. Are, but go see the film. No, I've acted in the film. I can tell you. I, I was the first person who said, yeah, to Vivek BJP propaganda film. You need to read the script. I read the script. Yeah. And believe you me, there are instances where I've turned around and said, hey, you haven't talked about that incident, about that religious yeah. community. You think because that's bullshit. Things of the media made a bullshit accusation on that community. I'm not going to put it in my film. Now that takes somebody to understand. Now, if you don't understand it, then if, but without watching the film, you're going to turn around and say, Hey, he's a BJP ka, uh, mouthpiece. He's only going to make things to make the Prime Minister look good. Hey, Baba, go there and see. If you actually go and see the mm -hmm. film, you will realize that he's actually said the ruling government, their yatra, yatra, rat yatra, their political campaigning, these are the cause of the spread of the, vac uh, the virus. He's actually said it. It's based yeah. on a book. It's a true story. There are true people. There's no, there's no scene, no dialogue that is unreal. It's all done as it happened. Even a mother-child relationship that they show. It's true. It happened with one scientist uh, who's a mother and what her son, the trauma, P PTSD, the son went through. So, you know, I mean, what can you say? You just have to say that, you know, I just wish sense prevails in this world. Calm, peace, you know, the same gods and all the other things you talk about, listen to their teachings and their preachings. Yeah. They're talking, think before you accuse, think before you do anything wrong. You know, God resides in all of us. I'm getting very philosophical, so let's change the topic. <laughs> so, um, so, as we have come towards the end of this interview, and uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, with working with such and you have spoken in such detail. I think it's it's definitely going to help a lot of other people who are going to watch this interview. 
So, sir, lastly, I wanted to ask you any uh, words of advice or words of wisdom to our uh, youth. Uh, you know, honestly, I I, I must say this. I have great hope in the uh, in the in the young generation because they are not like my generation. They are a lot more sensible. Yeah. They're a lot more sensitive. They're a lot more logical. They're a lot more forgiving. They and yet at the same time they're not because they're not going to tolerate nonsense from anyone just because he's a Mohan Kapoor or he's an X Y Z. No. They they yeah. they see logic. They see you know and they they understand. They they're very sympathetic. They love animals. They love the environment. They love so. There's a lot of good things, but on a personal level, I can just tell people that you know, be careful because the world isn't as rosy as you think it is. It's not a bad place, you know. So enjoy your life, but be careful. There's no harm in being careful. Like you know, any parent has told you, just be careful. You know, uh, yeah. one big advice I will give, and this might bore a lot of people who want to become. Uh, actors or you know sports people or whatever something that is not in the regular scheme of things which is basically uh, a job you know a nine to five job i seriously suggest everybody to complete their education please have a yeah. basic education not just 10 standard you know do your graduation and do it well you know because there has to be a plan b what if the the one thing that you're passionate about doesn't work out then what so i was somebody who was not really into you know the academics i was very sports oriented i was into drama elocution debates sports every sport i played i excelled at it every sport i excelled at and i was not good in academics but the thing is and i always wanted to join the army okay but because i got so carried away in all the fun and games of life and you know this that and the other I com I didn't even bother to think about that boss to join the army. You go it's not like you're going to go and knock on somebody's door or ring a call a number and say hello army. I want to join. It's not that you know you have to go through a process. But find out some of them may be knocking on a door, picking up a phone. But some of them there's like the army has a process. I didn't know about the yeah. process because I was so happy growing up like an idiot. You know just fooling around in life. When finally I decided, okay, chalo chalo, I must join the army. I realized that I'm too old to join uh, the NDA or the IMA. You know, I couldn't join either the NDA or the IMA, the military academy. And I think, holy crap! Now what do I do with life? So I said, chalo, whatever is going on, let it continue. So I just continued with my life, and one thing, something. I mean, I guess it's all destiny also, but don't rely on destiny, guys, because yeah. you need to have some kind of a plan now. I dread to think that if destiny hadn't stepped in and put me on this path, where would I be? Where would I be? What would yeah. I do? I mean, I was doing advertising. I was doing all that. So fair enough. But the point is, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a plan, especially in my time and now. You know, I'm talking the times have changed. It becomes so competitive. It's so competitive. Definitely. You can't afford to take things lying down. We didn't have too much choice then, and it wasn't. But yet, it was competitive. Now. You've got so much choice. You can just be a journalist. You can be an actor. You can be a sports person and successful yet. But the competition is severe. So you want to be a sports person? You gotta get up at four o'clock in the morning and do the grind. If you are an actor, you've got to watch movies. You've got to read books. You've got to watch plays. You've got to study things. Don't start thinking of yourself to be a star. Don't be a star. Be an actor. Be an actor. Actors become stars. Stars will fade after some time because sooner or later it's good. Yeah. Especially in today's day and age, today's day and age, you become a star because you're an actor. And Veer Kapoor has proven his metal as an actor, and he's become a star with Animal. Okay. Yeah. And but everything has a shelf life. Plan, plan, yes. plan. And plan means. So my advice, as a, I mean, in a, in a sentient way, would be. Get your education complete, a solid education, and parallelly pursue your passion. Whether that's writing, whether that's sport, whether that's acting, pursue that parallelly. Don't waste your time sitting on bloody social media like an idiot. What is it going to get you? Likes? Likes for what? Something stupid that you forwarded? That's nothing. Yeah, you yeah. think I'm making content? You're making content on YouTube? Fine, that's great. You know, make content, make it original. Don't try not to copy people. Get inspired by people. Don't copy people. Unfortunately, in India, copyright means the right to copy. It's not. 
sooner or later the right the, the laws are so stringent it's going to come knocking on your door so don't so think original and be brave put it out there who knows what might work hell if mon kapoor could make it anybody can wow it's it's such a insightful uh, interview it has been with you and so thought provoking and uh, throughout the interview you have been such a warm and generous person sir and i couldn't have been happier to interview anybody else but you today so thank you so much for giving us this honor to interview today and uh, wish you all the luck and i hope we get to see you more on both bollywood and hollywood projects and uh, remember that someone from assam is definitely going to root for you uh, in whichever projects you are uh, you are part of and uh, thank you thank you so much sir thank you It's so much for having me thank you for all your wonderful questions which are so refreshing and uh, i wish you and i wish uh, enigmatic uh, production all the very best for the future and uh, hopefully m- m- the strides that i make in life uh hopefully there'll be more opportunities to discuss the same with you on podcast like this and um, i'll be seeing you on the pod in the podcast world as you will see me in some format of either a television a mobile or on a big yeah. screen uh but yeah i'd also as an actor who does film i would also in- request and encourage all people to watch cinema in in a cinema hall because our business um, comes from cinema and not ott so that's as a request i mean i understand everyone has their compulsions and you know reasons for watching what they want to watch where they want to watch but if you watch uh, the movies that are made for the large format that would really help our industry and you know and it will give you a great experience because some things are made for the large screen and once again thank you so much wish you all the best and um, thank you for all the love and uh, and all the time that you've given me and hearing my ranting <laughs> no sir not at all not at all that it's been a absolute delight to have you on board for this interview and uh, i couldn't have asked for more and uh, this being my first ever interview in my life uh, you have you have made my day sir you have made this day very very memorable I'll never forget. I'm so day. happy I could. I'm so happy I could. I'm uh, that I could, and I'm so happy that you're happy. It makes me. It makes my heart smile that you're happy. Thank you, sir. Love you, Thank sir. Thank you. Thank Love you me. so much. All the best to Enigmatic Horizon and to you and to your team and tons of love. Thank you for this. Thank you, sir. Have a good Thanks. day, sir. You too. Bye now. <laughs>